Hi people, happy Thursday. This is the final episode of the series that we have been having on family planning and contraception. In this final episode, our darling Dr. Daria takes us through how to properly wear, use and discard a condom. And she also does a recap on all that we have learned thus far. I hope this has been an enlightening session or series. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments or you can send me a DM on Instagram at morayo.ahunaya. I look forward to hearing from you. Um, there are a lot of false beliefs that people have about contraception. A very common one is that associated with the intrauterine devices, like the copper T, the copper 7. Everybody always says that, oh, it's always going somewhere else. Yeah, it is true that sometimes the, the device may go into where the intestines are, but it is very, very uncommon. We should bear in mind that we usually get to hear the bad news. We don't get to hear the good news. All the hundreds of women and thousands of women that use it and don't have any complication never get to be heard. It's just the occasional one that has complications that we get to hear about. We also get to hear that it causes ectopic pregnancies. This is also not true. IUDs protect you from intrauterine pregnancies more than ectopic pregnancies. If a pregnancy occurs, it is then likely to be an ectopic pregnancy. It is not the device that is causing the ectopic pregnancy. We also hear sometimes that uh, the, well, I think it's more in traditional culture and it's, it's also associated with breastfeeding. And um, people believe that if a breastfeeding woman gets to have sexual intercourse with their husband, the sperm will poison the breast milk. That is really not so. I'm mentioning this, even though it's not a direct thing to do with family planning, it is almost like a traditional way of protecting the woman from getting pregnant when a baby is breastfeeding. Um, of course, it used to be easier when people married more than one wife, so they could always do a periodic abstinence with the wife who's just had a baby. But that gets to be a little bit harder these days when people are, tend to be monogamous. Um, breast milk is not poisoned by sperm, so you should not be afraid of sex. Just go and get a contraceptive method in place. We hear a lot about cancers and contraceptive devices. It is really, really not true. There are some breast cancers that are estrogen dependent. If there's a family history of those or if the person is already having a breast cancer that is estrogen dependent, of course, you want to avoid estrogens in them. But the family planning per se is not what is going to cause the breast cancer. So these are some of the things that people are always concerned about. If there are any other concerns, I think you can uh, put them in the comment section and we can deal with them at a later date. We hear a lot about condom use and condoms breaking during sexual intercourse. Yes, it occurs. Um, condoms, that's the male condom, which I have here in my hand. If it is not used properly, can break. So we need to know how to use it properly. We should remember that condom has the added advantage of 
protecting you more against sexually transmitted infections. Things like HIV, even HPV, all those things that uh, may get transferred from one person to the other from sexual contact. Remember, however, that this protection is not 100%. With increasing use of condoms, we find that genital warts and herpes get the, the sight of them gets, has moved closer to the root of the penis, which the condom does not cover. Also remember that if you wear a condom in the penis, it does not protect your mouth. So if you have oral sex, you can actually carry genital infections to the mouth. Herpes is one, human papilloma virus is another one. So please remember that using a penile cover will not protect you, your mouth, if you go on and have oral sex. It will just take you through how to use condoms properly. Because like I said earlier, it is when it's not used properly that you get to have breakages and increased failure rate. You can see that this nice, clean, beautiful packet of condom, I'll cover the name. When you pick it up, first of all, you need to look at the expiry dates. The fact that the outer cover of the pack is nice and neat doesn't mean it has not expired. This one expired April 2020, for example. So first thing you do is you look at the expiry date. Second thing you do is make sure you are not using a condom that has been kept in the glove compartment of your car for the last hundred years. This is because the heat in the glove compartment would denature the latex that the condom is made out of. And once it is denatured, it will break very, very easily. Also, some people keep condoms in their back pockets and forget it. They put it in the washing machine, wash it, and then when they, when they are reaching for condom, that's the one they, they reach for. One has to be very careful not to use those ones. Like I said earlier, always check the expiry date. When you open the condom, you can see how I'm struggling with this one. I think this packet has three condoms inside. The condoms come in different forms. There are a lot of marketing gimmicks. But uh, most of them really, they, they, there's not much difference in the, fun in the functionality of them. If you look at the packet, roll it in your finger, roll it like this. You will feel the condom inside should move from one side to the other freely. If it doesn't, it is not likely to be a good condom. Because if it's been exposed to heat and denatured, it might stick to the packet. And then if you look at the packet, you will see that one part of it is serrated and the other part is smooth. When you are about to open it, press away the condom from where you are going to rip. And then rip from the serrated edge. So like this, now this is the serrated edge. I have used these two fingers to separate or push it back. And this is very important when you have women that have... Uh, Women that have long fingernails, sorry. When you have women that have long fingernails, the fingernail itself can tear the condom. So in the process of tearing the pack, make sure the condom itself is not torn. You see how easily this one opens. Now, because I started from the serrated edge, if I were to start from the edge that is not serrated, you'll be there struggling, and then you see some people will use their teeth to bite into it. Your teeth can easily break the condom. And then when you bring the condom out, it's already lubricated. You can see the oiliness of it. It's shiny, it's oily, and it is rolled. The part that rolls out is the part that will be on the outside of the penis. And the part that you can see is like a cap. Hmm? If you look at it closely, you will see the part that's rolled out. Because if you do it the other way, then it will not roll very easily. 
The condom also has this little receptacle here, which is meant to collect the semen. When you are wearing the condom, make sure that that part is occluded. If ear gets trapped in between, it is going to break. Condoms can only be worn on an erect penis. If the penis is not erect, if it's flaccid, there's no way you can comfortably wear a condom on it. So you hold the edge, the receptacle area, block out the ear. Let's assume, okay, this is a banana. Let's assume that that's the penis, okay? With an erect penis, you then apply with the rolling part outside. Apply on it and then roll it as far up as it can go, right to the root of the penis. After sex, the penis must come out of the partner before it becomes flaccid. Otherwise, semen and other bloody fluids will leak from the edge of the condom. When you then remove the condom, please, Make sure that you remove it in a manner that doesn't make it to spill. It's going to be hard to remove from this banana. Okay, I think it's coming out. So when you remove it, the semen will then gather in this receptacle. Make sure you tie it. And when you tie it, you throw it responsibly where a little child will not take it and blow it like a balloon because if a child sees this they will think it's a balloon and this is where the semen would have gathered and if a child takes this and puts it in their mouth and blow it of course you are putting them at risk if you put it also in the toilets they tend to block toilets a lot so please dispose of your condoms responsibly don't leave them lying all over the place after they've been used we hear also some people complain that oh they don't use condom because their their penis is too is too big. I wish I had a water bottle here. But this condom which I'm going to loosen, this is the second one I'm loosening. I just want to show you that I don't think anybody Can you see how long it is? Can you see how it stretches? You can see how tough it is. And I can actually wear this on a ragolis, a big ragolis bottle. I don't think there is any man that is as big as this, the circumference. And there is nobody that is going to be, you are not a horse now, you can't be longer than this. So when you hear people say, oh, they are not going to use it because their penis is too big, it's all just making excuses. Please use your condom especially girls that are or couples or partners that are not uh, in a one-on-one -on -one relationship they break that thing and they go from one person to the other protect yourselves and protect others condom is not just going to help you with pregnancy it will help you with stis it's not a hundred percent so you should not be irresponsible in your choice making hmm? we still go from abstinence being faithful before we start talking about condom but it gives you some significant protection just to recap remember that family planning is not just about preventing pregnancy but making sure you have the right number of children that you desire at the time you desire the spacing you desire. So it has two faces of the coin. One is preventing pregnancy. The other is helping you get pregnant. It is also not a decision you take lightly. It's a conscious decision you should take even before you start having children. It's a serious discussion to hold with your potential life partner before you commit. Remember also that there is no one size fits all situation. It is an individualized situation depending on what you desire for yourself. So what may be good for one couple may not be good for the other couple. It is important that you go seek 
healthcare for contraceptives, and the decision-making process should involve you actively and your partner. It's not just something you just leave for the doctor or the healthcare provider to make. Also, tell your healthcare provider if you have any significant family history, especially things like blood clots in the family, brain um, strokes, especially in younger people, and whatever else has been recurrent in the family, because those things would influence what kind of contraceptives are used for you. In this environment also, that we have a lot of fibroids, sometimes you can use certain IUDs to resolve the bleeding that may be associated with fibroids or abnormal uterine bleeding. So you can use the side effects as a gain. If your period has been heavy, there are also some family planning methods that will help you reduce the amount of blood loss. There are some that can be used um, when you have polycystic ovarian disease and you don't want to get pregnant. So if you have also beard and plenty of hormonal acne, there are some like the Dianet that will be very useful for you that contain ciproterol acetate. Um, tell all your health issues to your healthcare provider in the process of picking and choosing your um, mode of contraception. Please go in with your eyes wide open. Do not just leave childbearing to fit. It's not just God give it. So anyone is okay. Be active in that decision-making process.